Hi, I'm Krakenfall. These are the games that I had fun with this year. Not all of them, just the ones I remember to take clips of. But it's a good representation of how I spent my year in gaming. It was a good year. I want to take a moment to share my top five favorite games that I played in 2019. Games that stood out, caught my attention, and didn't let go. Games I had a lot of fun playing. Games I definitely recommend checking out. So, let's get started. And number five is Destiny 2. I've been following Bungie and the Destiny franchise for a while, and I was pretty disappointed with Destiny 2 when it came out because of some deep design changes, writing changes, sandbox changes. Hello. You know what, I covered a lot of that in a podcast, so I'll put the link in the description, and you can hear for yourself how I felt about it at the time. Long story short, Bungie spent so much time thinking about whether they could make players experience the game in the way they intended, they never stopped to think about whether they should. Well, in 2019, Bungie did stop to think about whether they should and started to make changes to their design philosophy that brought the game closer to the game I wanted to play. Pinnacle and Ritual weapons were fun to grind out. Activities like Menagerie, Vex Offensive, and even Black Armory were fun to play through, although I didn't really like Black Armory for the longest time. Shadowkeep brought a whole gamut of engaging content and systems like armor and weapon modding and holy crap, save 14! I still don't like raids that much because of Leviathan raid burnout, and Trials, my number one all-time favorite Destiny activity, is still missing, but I really had a lot of fun playing Destiny this year. Bungie still has to make up for killing Nathan Fillion, though. At least we have each other. My next game on the good list is Outer Worlds, a game I had no idea about until pretty much a month before it released. I didn't think I'd be able to play Outer Worlds because Epic Game Store bought them out for exclusivity, and I'm low-key boycotting Epic Game Store unless a friend really wants to play an exclusive game together. Exclusivity never directly benefits customers. Epic Games, come on, cut that crap out. Thankfully, Xbox Game Pass for PC also had Outer Worlds, so I jumped onto it as soon as I had time. The writing and narrative is fantastic on a world building level, on a character level, and a plot level. Companion quests are interesting, although short, and I think it's funny that the colony is basically controlled by remote corporations on a level that matches my deepest fear about how the expansion of the human race would turn out in our own solar system. (laughs) I mean, slap an intersolar internet and social media onto that thing, and Outer Worlds is pretty much what I would imagine. The game does seem to run out of steam narratively the further you go in, though. But that's probably because of the semi-completionist approach I always end up taking with the side quests. I end up jumping around too much and not following the main story. Outer Worlds felt like a classic open world RPG that was really relaxing to play for me. And the number three position is a game that didn't come out in 2019 but I really enjoyed playing. That game is Final Fantasy XV. So I'd been meaning to play FF15 for a while, and it took a friend playing the soundtrack nonstop during a camping trip to convince me to start it, and I'm glad I did. If I had to describe FF15 in three words, I would say in sync road trip. Pretty much. FF15 plays out kind of like Red Dawn with the whole invaders in your homeland and guerrilla warfare hits on enemy bases and stuff, but with more chocobos. The game allows you a surprising amount of freedom, even for an open world game. It's cool that there are areas on the map that are restricted only by your ability to survive, and the game allows you to try. The mechanics of the game are flexible and allow you to throw way above your weight class if you know what you're doing. Can't say too much about the story yet since I'm only about halfway through, but I plan on finishing it soon. I'm enjoying my time with the game, great soundtrack, great sidetracks, great time so far. Although I really want to know why Talk and Hammerhead is so surprised when I visit, if you know what I mean. Go 
Oh, uh, how was the hunt, boys? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Sid's friends, was it? Oh, oh there you are. <laughs> so Every time, Taco, what are you doing? Sure. What is it this time? Another hunt. And my second favorite game I played in 2019 was the Resident Evil 2 Remake. Never really played Resident Evil games growing up. I always watched my friends play them. I was never really into scary movies and video games. I didn't really want to play games that made me more stressed out. RE2 Remake really wasn't on my radar until I watched the friend I used to watch play the original play the remake. I was immediately sold. The vague familiarity of the Resident Evil storyline and the removal of the clunky and claustrophobic camera perspectives convinced me to give it a try. And I really liked the pacing. It's a slow burn at first, clearing room by room looking for the next steps to proceed. But like clockwork, after a little while, something new and drastic happens to push you along or progress in the story. For example, the constant dread and threat management the game throws at you with Mr. X is really great. It made me feel like I was running on a tightrope, kind of risking it all just by being there. Every time I slipped up, it would take a little bit to climb back and get on my bearings. But it wouldn't be too hard to move forward just by keeping track of him and some smart pathing. The suspense in Resident Evil 2 Remake is the best kind of suspense, the kind you can do something about. I also really like the game's replayability and plan on finishing the new game plus. Oh, jeez! Oh, oh, my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and my number one favorite game of the year is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I was actually pretty surprised when Fallen Order was announced. Star Wars games have kind of sucked in the past few years, and the developer, Respawn, was starting to feel like Visceral Games. EA pretty much killed Visceral Games after making it cram a bunch of microtransactions into Dead Space 3. And surprise, it flopped. When Respawn made Apex Legends, I thought EA was doing the same thing by forcing it to chase after the Battle Royale cash cow. I'm happy I was wrong, because Fallen Order is my favorite Star Wars game in at least the past 10 years. It's a really tight experience with really good characters, a legit Star Wars story, an actual ending, good combat, not too many collectibles. I mean, Fallen Order was such a joy to play, I booted it up after I finished, because I really didn't want to put it down. I did have a hard time with the combat for a while, until someone told me there's no action cancellation. If you press a button to swing your lightsaber, if it's a heavy attack or something, you can't actually jump away until you finish the attack. This really wasn't intuitive for me. I mean, I didn't realize it on my own, and that led to some frustrating battles on Jedi Master difficulty. After I found that out though, the game really soared into greatness for me. The difficult battles became a challenge to rise to instead of a confusing mess. You cannot break me. I had so much fun playing Fallen Order, I really recommend picking it up. So there it is. Those were my top 5 favorite games to play in 2019. It was a really great year of gaming for me and I had a lot of fun. GameRank said that 2019 wasn't an amazing year for gaming, just a good one, but for me it was pretty awesome. There were a few games that I wish I played, like Death Stranding or Natal Worlds, but I think I'll get to those soon. 2020 looks like it's going to be even better. April especially has a ton of huge releases that I really can't wait to play, like the FF7 Remake, Dying Light 2, and Cyberpunk 2077. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really haven't ever done a video like this, so I really appreciate you checking it out. I hope you had a good time gaming in 2019, and I hope you have an even better 2020. Bye now!